Today we're going to take a look at the timbales. Uh, we're going to kind of see how the instrument's set up, some rhythms and patterns associated with the instrument, and how it functions and relates to the other instruments in the Latin percussion rhythm section. So let's go. So what you see here is a normal timbale player setup, or timbalero, um, as they're known in Spanish. To the left, you have the imbra, which is the larger of the two drums you see. And to the right is the macho, the smaller of the two drums. Um, normally, you're going to see the imbra about 15 inches in diameter. And the macho is one away from that, 14 inches in diameter. Um, tuned to about an open fifth from the bottom to the top. And you also see an assortment of bells, campanas as they're known in Spanish. You have this jam block that can be used to emulate a clave player, uh, the clave patterns if there is no clave player uh, present. You have the contra campana or the mambo bell or the timbali bell um, that's going to be used for a lot of um, up salsa sections and we'll kind of get to that later. And up top, the very top facing outwards toward the audience is the cha-cha bell. It's the smallest of the bells you see on the instrument. And that's almost exclusively used for the cha-cha genre of music, but it can be used for some uh, solo ideas and some embellishment in other types of Latin music. And sometimes you'll see the timbalero use a crash cymbal. Um, normally on the smaller side of the spectrum, just to add emphasis to ensemble hits. So when we're talking about the timbales, it's also important to note what you're actually using to play the instrument. Here you see what you would not use to play the timbales, which is a normal concert snare stick. You don't wanna use that. You can tell just by looking at what you would use that these two sticks, although made of wood and very cylindrical shapes, are not the same thing. We have a very a finite shape with no grooves, no bead on the stick, no shoulder of the stick, with no taper. It's a cylindrical shape through and through, and even with timbali sticks, you can have different sizes of timbali sticks. These two placed together, the one on your right is a little bit thicker, the one on your left is a little bit thinner. Again, all depending on the color and the timbre of the instruments you want to cut through the ensemble. All right, so now that we're finally to a point where we can play the instruments, we know how to set up, we kind of know what's going on with the setup, uh, we're going to talk about clave. More often than not, if you listen to contemporary or popular salsa charts now, you're going to hear a 2-3 song clave. A 2-3 song clave goes like this. Clap along. Now against a steady beat, it would go something like this. Alright, so we've kind of talked about 2-3 song clave, but how does that relate to what the timbalero is going to be doing on a normal basis? Um, well, in medium tempo, up sub-tempo salsa tunes, uh, the timbalero is going to be playing in the down sections, normally during the verses, um, what we call a cascada, which translates to shell in English. The cascada on the timbales are the shells of the drums. They are aluminum drums most of the time. So you get a very metallic, bitey sound. Different sounds from both the embra and the macho. But most of the time, the cascada is going to be played on the macho. Okay? Now, the mnemonic device that I use to remember the 2 3 cascada is I've got rhythm like Tito Puente. Yes, I've got rhythm like Tito Puente. Now with the clave, you're going to hear 
how the parts interact with one another. The accents, the emphasis, the inflection that I'm putting on my right hand on the cascara sort of aligns with what the clave is doing in 2 3 sound. Now I can fill in uh, all those spaces in the cascada with my left hand on the embra if I do something like this. So now we're going to talk about uh, the up salsa pattern, the mambo bell pattern uh, for 2 3 song clave. Uh, with the, what the timbalero is going to be playing. So again, mambo bell is the larger of the two cowbells that are mounted on the timbales. And what we're going to do, I don't have a clever mnemonic for this one, uh, but we're going to stick with the 2 3 stone clave. And this is kind of what the mambo bell pattern will sound like by itself. Um, counting along. One, two, three, and four, and four. So I think one of the oddest things for um, beginning timbaleros to do is to flip the 2-3 song clave pattern into a 3-2 song clave pattern. And all you do as a timbalero is take those two bars, those two measures that we played as the 2-3 song and reverse the order in which you play them. Um, for me, that was one of the harder things that kind of grasp my head around. Um, so. Uh, 3-2 cascada pattern would sound something like this. And the mambo bell pattern. One final concept to talk about is the abanico. Uh, the abanico, that word translates to fan in English. Um, so some people describe this as sort of like a broken fan sound. Um, so the timbalero is going to signal uh, a transitional material or change in the piece with the abanico. Now in most cases it's going to start and end with a rim shot. and you're gonna have a roll between those. Now it's not an exact science as to what the duration or um, the value of the roll is. Some people buzz the roll, some people double stroke. Um, but as long as you're not singling it, it's fine. And sometimes um, it's just a small little a drop with one stick. Um, that it's normally happens in cha-chas more often in slower tempi. Um, so two, three sound transitioning from down salsa to up salsa from the cascada to the mambo bell. Take a listen.
addition to the medium and up-tempo salsa uh, mambo bell cascara patterns you can also play and a very popular salsa style, Latin style, is cha-cha-cha or cha-cha. Um, normally, whenever you're doing the cha-cha, you're going to have a steady quarter note on the cha-cha bell here. However, the cha-cha gets its name uh, from the cha-cha-cha on four and one. So occasionally you can hear a timbalero play this. Four, one, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three. Notice the close strokes or muted tones on beat two, one, two, and then the open tones or on beat four. Um, it kind of just depends on the context whether you're going to see the timbalero use their hand or if they do a stick. 